Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to continue what we built off on the previous episode and we're going to learn how to do form submissions. So on the previous episode, we learned how to create new records on our database using models. So today we're going to actually go ahead and use the same code and learn how we can actually submit this form here and store whatever we type in here in our database. So let's get right into it. Now, before we are actually able to process this, I assume you guys are already familiar with HTML forms and form submissions. So we're going to first create our form in our HTML. So let's go over there and do it. So I'll go and I'll find our dashboard page. Now later on, I will kind of move this over. Actually, let's do it now. So I'll go to, I'll create a new form and I call it shirt. We can call it whatever you like. Some people call it includes. It's up to you. And I'm going to name this uh, submit idea.blade.php. And instead of underline, I actually use a, I like to use a dash. That's what I like. And some people like to use an underscore here. Uh, I personally don't like using underscore, but it's up to you if you want mainly because it's an included, so we're a partial, but I'd like it without an underscore personally, so I don't use it, but you guys can do it, and some a lot of people do uh, if you look at some open source projects. So I'll just save it right now, and because the code, uh, our HTML is getting a bit too long, I'll actually take this part of code, and I'm going to move it over to, whoops, what is going on? I'm going to move it over to our share idea blade file. And then I'm going to include it here. So I'm going to say share dot submit idea. Let's go back and check if everything is working. It is indeed. And right here we have a message that idea created successfully. For now, I'll keep it later on. Uh, we'll remove it and show it only when we have a error message or a success message. But for now, I'll keep the code so we have it. As a matter of fact, while we are in the process, why not go ahead and yeah, I can we can make it be we can have an error message that blade.php and I'll have a success message dot blade dot php. And I believe I didn't make any typos. And I will take this code and I'm gonna move it over there. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> so for the error, I'll go instead of success to danger. That's the bootstrap code for it. So just change this name. Now, right now we are hard coding the message. I'll, I'll, we will fix that later on. For now, just I'm going to remove it from our dashboard over here. Later on, we will use it. So now that we have that, let's also actually clean this part, right? You see this card is very long. I don't really like it. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new file and I name this uh, idea card.blade.php and I'm going to move our card over there. I think that's the way to go. So I'll copy this. I'll move it to idea card and I'll format it. And I'm going to include it here. So I guess while we are doing this, let's also do this idea card. Now, one thing that does happen in Laravel Blade is if you have a variable inside a parent blade file, it will also be passed down to the child blade file. So this file or this idea card will also have access to the idea variable. So we don't need to do anything to pass it down. So let's go back. Hopefully everything works. It does. So for now, we're good to go. I'm not going to try to do any more refactoring. For now, I think the code looks a bit cleaner. We will later on also do those guys, but for now, I think we're good. So I'll close some of them. Now let's go to our submit form. So I'm going to actually have a HTML form open and we're going to have it be a post. So a post request. And for the action, uh, I'll, for now, I'll leave it empty and I'm going to have our closing form tag as well, which we forgot as well. Okay. Let's format it. So right now we need to actually put a route here or an address for our submit tickets or ideas. 
And the way I'm going to actually do it is I'm going to go on our web, uh, web routes file and I'm going to create the submit ticket route or submit ideas route. And I want to follow the RESTful routing. So I'm going to say ideas and I'm going to instead of get, have it be a post request. And here you can actually uh, do get, which we already have seen. You can do a post request. That's generally what you do on web applications. Uh, you can do put, you can do basically anything in a RESTful request here. But for now, we'll go with post. Later on, I'll show you guys how to do put and other things as well. And here I'm going to, for now, I'm going to leave it be at dashboard controller and index. It's not that important for now. Later on, I'll change these two. So basically, we now have a route at slash idea, which is a post request. So we can go in our submit idea. Now we can manually put post. That's one way of doing it. There is another way we can do that. And we can use blade. So you can use URL and then put slash post. That's one way. And let's go save this and let's see how it looks. I'm going to actually go inspect it. I'll go and let's see if we can find our form. And I hope you guys can see it. But this is the URL that's used. So basically, when you put URL, the URL function in Blade, it will basically add this and it, as a prefix to whatever you enter to your routes. And sometimes you may actually want that. So you don't want it to be slash post. You actually want it to include the full URL. So that's one way of doing it. There's actually another way of using routes in our uh, Blade file without hard coding it. And that's using something called name the routes. So you can actually give your route a name. So just type in name like I have here and give it a name. So I'm going to say idea.create. So you can give it whatever name you like. Uh, there is a convention where, for example, if you have another route, it could be idea. And I'm going to say idea.index. So this is going to be the route for showing ideas. And then dot .create is going to be the route for creating an idea. I will later on cover all of these. But for now, basically, this is the naming convention we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use the model name or the resource name and then the action we are taking. For now, we are creating it. So now that you have created or given your route a name, you can go in your uh, blade file and instead of URL, use the route and then give it the name. And if you go back, the code still works. Again, this has to be a valid route name if we get a you know, some random name, it's going to give you an error. So, and again, Larvor is very smart and tells you exactly where the origin of the error is. So make sure you type in the exact name and then everything should work just fine. So now that we have this, and I'm going to add a type uh, submit to our button. I don't think this is necessary in HTML5, but I'll add it here just in case. We have created our form and we should actually be able to submit it. So, I'll put something here and I click submit and we get an error page expired. Hmm. Why do you think that is? So this is actually part of a uh, lot of old security uh, to prevent CSRF attacks. So, which is very good with Laravel. So in order to actually prevent this error from happening, you need to do a blade directive CSRF. And this will include a CSRF token for security purposes. And if you guys are not uh, familiar with CSRF attacks, I do recommend you guys go and do some reading on it. I will include a link in description to learn more about it. So I'm not going to cover it here, but I assume you have previously encountered it in your, you know, PHP while you were learning PHP, but just adding this blade directive will solve that for us. And I'm going to try it again. And yep, we are submitting the request and nothing happens right now because we are basically sending a request to this page, right? The dashboard page. So nothing is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to go and create a new controller to handle the process or the request of creating a new idea. And I'm going to call it idea controller. So let's go the good old way, a PHP artisan, make controller. And one more tip I want to give you guys, in case you forget, you can actually do PHP artisan make, run that command and Laravel will actually, or artisan will give you all the available actions you can use. So for us, you can go through, whoop, we need make controller. 
and so you don't have to memorize all of these but so far throughout the course we have used it like three times in a project you may use it 10 20 times so eventually you will just naturally memorize all of this like i myself didn't memorize them it just naturally happened so don't worry about them at all so make controller and i'm gonna call it idea controller and again i'm going singular you can go ideas controller if you like but general convention among the kind of laravel community is use singular that's what you see used a lot so that's also the convention i like so i'm going to do that i'm going to hit enter all right now that we have that i'll go and i'll find our controller idea controller and i'm going to create a route public function store and in here we're going to actually basically store our idea all right and i need to update our route so i'll go in our route and instead of dashboard controller i name it to idea controller and i send it to our uh, store method all right so now that we have this we should actually test it out again to see what happens i'll reload the page and wait a minute okay i'll put test i'll share it and we get a blank page and this is to be expected because we are not doing anything inside our idea controller so yeah that's to be expected now in order to actually access the request from the browser now in php you would do it using the super global so i'm gonna do dump uh, this is how you would do it in vanilla php you would use the post super global and we can do that as well but and if i reload the page we would actually be able to see that there is a token which is our csrf token but laravel gives us a set of tools to actually make this a bit easier to do validation and a bunch of other things so we can actually access the request from the browser using something called the request so i can say request and this is going to be a helper. It's, this function will always, always be available in your uh, controllers. And you can, for example, say get. Or maybe we can, have, first of all, dump the request itself and see what we have inside. So I'm going to say uh, dump. Let's dump the request itself, see what we get. And I refresh it again. And we can see request is illuminate HTTP request so it returns us a request object and inside it we can see it has a bunch of different things so for example we can access our method if you need to see the method if you want to see what kind of headers there are in the request you can access it from here now for now we don't need to worry about the headers but that is something you can do and then there is the request itself and you can see the token is inside it as well I'll zoom in a bit more if it's not visible for you guys so we can actually access all this information from here, right? Now, what I'm going to do is you can also get individual items from the request by doing it this way. So I'm going to say dot. I'm going to use the get function on it and you can pass in the name of the value. So for us, in here, we actually haven't given our text area a name, so I'm going to give it a name. So I'll say idea. Why not? So now that I have done that, here I can actually say idea. And the get function also has a second argument, which is going to be the default in case it is empty. And if it is empty, I'm going to actually set it to null for now. Or we can set it to empty, up to us. And let's dump this and see if it's actually working or not. So uh, I'll do have to go back because we didn't have a name before. And I'm going to say, hello, YouTube. And I click share. And if I zoom in, you can actually see that it is working and we are able to access whatever was inside it, right? So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and create our idea like we did in our dashboard controller. So I opened the dashboard controller. We had this code here. I'll copy it. I'll actually remove it from the dashboard controller. We don't need it there anymore. I'll go to idea controller. I'll paste it and uh, I'll import this. And basically, instead of what we had here, which was hello YouTube, I'll replace it with 
the code we just wrote. So we'll use the value provided by our users. And I'll save this. All right, guys, sorry, my microphone disconnected. So I'm re-recording re this area. So basically, we now are able to successfully actually create our ideas. So let's go and test this out. I'll come over here and uh, I'll reload the page. And I say, hello, YouTube test three, and I'll click share. Although we do need to redirect the user after we successfully create it. But if I re reload the page, you can see, hello, YouTube test three. So we are now able to successfully create a new idea. Now on the previous episode, I showed you guys how to actually create a record using this way. There is an easier way or a shorter way. And basically you can get rid of this new and say idea. There is a static method on all models called create. You do need your fillable object set. That, that is important. But basically using this, you can uh, create your models in one line and this will work. So, but before we do it, we go and test it out. I want to show you guys how to redirect the user back to the dashboard page, right? So we don't get the white screen. You can do a return statement, return, redirect. Now here you can pass in a URL or you can say route and give it the name of a route. Now, right now our dashboard doesn't actually have a route name. So I'll come in and I give it a name. I'll say name uh, dashboard and I put in dashboard here and it should now redirect us back to the dashboard page after we create a new idea. So I'll come here and I say what is going on. I'll share and we, as you can see, we get redirected back to this page and we can see the idea that we just created. So we have successfully done the basic creation or the C part of CRUD on Laravel. So that's it guys, this is gonna work pretty well for now. On the next episode, we'll learn how to actually validate this and also kind of uh, how to do validation rules and a bunch of things more. And also on the upcoming episodes, we will learn how to update, edit, all that stuff. We will for sure learn them. But for now, I think this is enough. This episode is already long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day.